Hey guys, Nate Bailey here with the Life Outdoors and Bear Bow Hunters. Have you ever wanted to know the difference between the designs of longbows? Well, stay tuned and we're going to show you. Okay, today we have with us both uh, both Liberty longbows. One is the Chief, which is more of a modern, it's a modern reflex deflex design, but it's been around for quite a few years. And then we have the new Edge from Liberty longbows. And it is more of a um, hybrid longbow. So it has a lot more reflex and deflex. I will unstring these bows so you can take a look at them unstrung. So maybe that'll tell you a little bit more about them. But um, when we talk about reflex and deflex, what we're talking about is deflex is where it turns back away from the front of the bow. This is the front. Um, and then deflex is where it turns back out. And each one of those things that you put into a bow reflects the differences in the bow. The cool thing about these bows is they're both the same weight. But this one is a 60 inch bow and this one's a 62 inch bow and they're both 60 at 28 inches. So 60 pound bows at 28 inches. So we're gonna to take today and we're gonna do a complete test on um, the differences in these bows. I'm gonna show you the profile differences and then I'm gonna shoot them through the chronograph and then I'm gonna shoot um, one in real, real life hunting situations. Uh, we got some new 3D target angles and stuff that we're trying to do around here, so. Okay, so the differences in the uh, longbows is in the design, of course, right? And remember we talked about the reflex, deflex, we talked about parallels, but what that does is that affects the way that the, draw, the bow draws for each individual. Um, some people like um, the way one draws over another. And so what we do to measure that is called a force draw curve. And what we do is we put a, a, a scale on this. And as we pull it back each inch, we record how much uh, it takes to pull that back. And what will happen is as you start getting further and further back, you're going to get more and more um, poundage on that scale. So your force draw curve will start looking like this. And what what we uh, talk about with that is you want one that really is pretty smooth the way i like it um, and a longer bow usually is a very smooth bow because your string angles as you pull back if you you're you have a lot more leverage up on the tip of your bow so as you're pulling back you you don't do what they call stacking and stacking what that is is when you get to a certain spot, I never have a problem with that because my draw is so short. I have a 26 inch draw. I don't think there's a bow out there that'll stack for me, but for guys that, that have 28 and 30 inch draws, yeah, there's definitely bows that'll, that'll stack for you. So if say this bow was shorter, at, at, say it was short down to here, as I'm drawing um, my angles to my to where my anchor is, is further. So I don't, I'm pulling, against the limb I'm, I don't have any leverage over that limb so then what happens in your force draw curve is it pushes it straight up so when you get towards the back end um, you'll hit a wall and you can't draw it any further of them so this um, bow this is the edge and this is more of the hybrid bow if you guys if you guys could see it's got more um, reflex and deflex in the limb and this is a 60 inch bow compared to a 62 so this is a little bit shorter but at the same time, um, this bow was, has a lot more in the riser. And so you're gonna probably feel better coming over to this bow from a recurve because most recurves have that same dish in the riser. Um, another thing about this bow is you're, you're at, at brace, you're gonna have more tension or more stored energy on the bow at brace. And the reason is because the limbs are already pulled back further at brace. Um, you'll see when I unstring these bows, you'll see what I'm talking about. But some people don't like that. So, um, a recurve at brace has a lot of tension at brace because you're pulling that recurve all the way back, right? It's got a lot stored at brace. Um, some people don't like that. Some people like the traditional long bow. And this one's this one's a modern longbow. This has got reflex and deflex in it too. But um, like the traditional, the old, old longbows were just a straight piece of wood and they had different parallels in them. And so at brace, they didn't, 
they didn't store as much energy even as this bow does at brace. So it's all about what the archer wants and what the archer feels. So that's why a lot of different um, different manufacturers or manufacturers, boyers, that's why a lot of different boyers use different bows. So let's go ahead and take these off a of brace and then uh, you'll be able to see exactly what they look like, the profiles look like, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, how they store more energy at brace, how it's gonna pull harder at brace, and then maybe loosen up a little bit. A lot of these bows do that. Their force draw curve is a little bit easier. It doesn't gain as much um, in the mid draw. It gains most all of it off the front draw. Um, this bow probably uh, is a lot more stable as far as how much it gains as it comes up. So all of those things are something that boyers take into account. And you guys, when you start shooting them, you're going to take into account and you'll feel it. Um, me personally, this is my bow. But uh, Gage, I think, is going to start shooting this bow. So let me unstring these and uh, we'll sh we're going to unstring them and then I'll string them back up and then we're going to shoot them. And then once we shoot them, then we're going to do a little bit of play and shoot. And, you know, you can't just get bows out and not sh just shoot some targets. So uh, let me unstring them. All right. So once we get them uh, unstrung, you can definitely see the difference. So this is the edge and see how much more deflex it has coming off of the riser. If you look at the at the chief compared to the edge it's pretty flat coming off the riser compared to the edge and then if you look at the reflex coming into the edge so you got reflex a lot more reflex and it almost looks recurvish when it's unstrung um, compared to the the chief and the chief you can see it's got some it's got a lot of reflex up towards the top um, of the limb the edge is deeper if i could hold them together there so maybe you guys could see that um, and of course there's a lot more in the riser of the uh, edge so those are the difference in the profiles now let's go shoot them all right so we have the chronograph here that I got from three rivers archery the pro chrono you could get one of them right here um, they're great they're a great thing to have you could test bows against them and then another cool thing about them is they help you realize um, how bad your release is so you, you can kind of see how clean your release is or shooting problems too um, maybe you're not getting full draw you're you're collapsing or whatever but they'll show you your speeds and it helps you if you shoot through a chrono a few times if you start missing a lot shoot through a chrono a few times and it'll it'll let you know that you're you're probably not pulling far enough back and you're probably not engaging your back muscles but anyhow we're going to shoot both these bows remember uh what we said this is this is the edge and this is the chief. They're both made by Liberty Longbow and uh, the edge is uh, a heavier reflex deflex bow and it's got a heavier riser and a heavier deep um, engagement on the hand. And for guys switching over from recurves, the edge probably would be closer to what you're used to. Now, um, we're gonna shoot them through the chrono. I have two sets of arrows. They're, uh, they're both tuned. They're, these are both 60 at 28. Both bows are 60 at 28, so they're tuned for it. These are uh, 650 grain arrows, and these are 500 grain arrows. So I'm going to shoot both of them through the chrono um, and let you guys know uh, what the difference is in the speeds. It's kind of interesting to see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this string. You just go up here to the button that says delete string now it'll it'll record that string so what what it means by strings is if you're using this chrono is each set of shots so like i'm going to shoot three of these that's the first string and then i'll get the other bow the second string i'll shoot three with that and then it'll record each string so we, it divides them up it's a really cool system so we're going to go ahead and shoot it um and i'll shoot these three arrows and then we'll go retrieve them and i'll shoot them through the edge this of course again is the chief 60 at 28 and 62 inches. 151. 148. And 150. So we got 151, 148, and 150. I'm gonna go retrieve those arrows and then we'll do the edge. Okay, so here we go. We have the Liberty Edge. And we're going to go ahead and do our, our shot um, 
string through that, through the, through the chrono with the edge, and we'll see if there's any difference in speeds. First shot is 149. <laughs> Second shot. Oh, right on, 149. That means I'm shooting pretty well, too. Third shot. 149. So I got 149 across the board. So all three of them are 149. So my average is going to be 149. But that's not that much different than the Chief. So we're looking at a difference between um, three feet per second. I mean, and the average, I think, on the Chief was 150, 149, 150. So they're shooting about the same speed. Um, now, there's some difference in the draw and there's difference in the handles. But as far as the speed's concerned, there's not any difference at with the 650 grain arrow. Let's start shooting a little bit uh, lighter arrow and see where we go. All right, we'll take the old Pro Chrono here and we're going to change string. So now we're on three. That means that we're going to be shooting the 500 grain arrows. Um, these are the 500 grain carbons and we'll start with the Chief. And we'll see if maybe the different designs like different arrows. Um, one likes a heavier arrow or a lighter arrow. 159. That's actually cooking for a longbow with the 500 grain arrow. 162. 161. So we're in the 160s. Um, average in 160s with the 500 grain arrows out of the uh, Chief. We'll go ahead and go grab those arrows and we'll do the, um, we'll do the edge next. All right, we're with the 500 grain arrows and we're going to shoot the edge next. And we'll see, uh, remember the Chief was around 160s. Remember it's the same, same everything on these bows and just different designs and uh, we're gonna go change our string and we're on string four and we are ready to shoot all right here we go 159 161 and 160 okay so there you see it. Chrono doesn't lie. Um, the numbers are close enough. I, I feel like I'm sh I'm doing a good representation with my shooting. Both of the Liberty longbows are shooting exactly the same with me shooting them. Um, these are, of course, again, 60 at 28. They're just different in design. This is the Chief, and this is the Edge. I don't know if one's louder than the other, but I do know that this bow, the edge, will um, feel more like a recurve to you. So if that's what you're into, you're trying to get into a recurve, that's probably the one you're after. Now, here's the deal. Um, I got a place around here, I got a lot of room, and I am going to make a 3D course back here. But it's not just gonna be any average old 3D course. I'm gonna clean it up and I'm gonna make this course something that is a lot like what you would encounter in the woods and today i'm going to move the target over there and we're going to see if we could shoot just like you would when you're hunting and uh, we're going to be shooting through this this is going to be called the brush spot because there's so much brush through there but i'm going to move the target in there and we are going to shoot through and see if we can shoot the brush today because if you're going to do any kind of testing if you're going to do any kind of bow shooting or uh, testing and playing you gotta just plain shoot all right so i'm gonna do it with the old liberty and look you can see him down there we're gonna call him elliot so this is the old bushwhacker setup we're gonna call him elliot down there because this is kind of how you would set up um here in, in the southern cascades when we're hunting up there um a lot of times you know he's chasing and then we got it come around the corner and we just find an opening in the brush and he's standing there. And so we have these kind of situations all the time here. Is this something you could shoot through? So can we shoot through there and kill Elliot? I don't know, it's a good try. All right, here we go, let's give it a shot. 
Now normally you just have one arrow, but we're gonna do three arrows because Elliot's tough. Oh, I got him in the liver a little bit far back. Man, it's it's amazing how much different. All, um, see that stick going across his vitals down there? It just subconsciously pushes you back. It pushes you back. Um, it's weird, you know, when you're shooting like I shoot and shooting instinctive subconsciously. I'm going to make myself get right into that shoulder this time. Oh, we, we got a little bit further forward. It's working. Old Elliot would have been dead on both of them shots. They're not not the best shots down there, but both of them would have killed him. That one far back would not be a fun one, though. I, I don't like hitting animals like that. That tree just keeps pushing you over. All right, uh, so you can get through the brush. I'm going to do another shot here. Yeah, that's just not good enough. Uh, that's not something. So here's the deal. When we're practicing like this, there's only one reason for me to practice this kind of stuff, and that's because I like to hunt. And so I want to make good, clean kills. And uh, those bushes are pushing my subconscious, pushing it back. I'm going to have to really concentrate on this next set of shots and hold that in because I could see that stick coming right across his vitals there. So this is a real shot. This is something that you're going to encounter. Would you take that shot? Leave in the comments below. Would you take that okay, shot? Okay, so All here's right. the scenario. You guys saw I got too far back because of that bush that's coming across his, his vitals and subconsciously when you're shooting instinctive, that kind of stuff just really messes with you. So I'm going to have to uh, blur that out in my mind and see if I can put a good shot on Elliot. Now, Elliot's coming across there. Um, he's coming across and he's chasing a doe. And here's the situation is we got, I, I saw him coming down the hill. I got ready. I got drawn on him. I knew he was going to come into this, this little opening, but he stopped. He didn't stop right where I wanted him to, so I whistled at him and I got him to stop. But every time that happens, they always stop where you don't want them. So would we take this shot? Would you guys take this shot? You could an answer it down below. Um, I definitely would. It, it, this is probably 15 yards. I would definitely take this shot at 15 yards. Um, but you know, that's up to each individual. Do you think you could weed it through those trees? So um, we're gonna see if we can, okay? 15 yards, we may move this back to 30 yards too and see if we could actually do it back there. So, Elliot stopped down there. We're calling him Elliot because he's got one antler, just like in uh, open season. So, because uh, I always wanted to shoot that deer in open season. So, here we go. Let's see if we can get Elliot. Oh, we pinwheeled him. Pinwheeled him. See if you if you got to make yourself do it though. And I shot within inches of that of that twig. Let's see if I can do another one. Oh. Concentration, concentration to tell yourself to hold tight on the shoulder, hold tight on the shoulder. Don't let that limb get in your way. Concentration, get your hand. That's why I like, that's why I like this chief. It fits me just perfect. Get your hand, bow hand right. Get your bow hand where you feel it. You know where that bow hand's at. And then you draw, come to anchor, hold and concentrate, concentrate. Oh, we killed him again. Just nailed him. That is a double lunger. It's gonna blow, it's gonna be perfect. Um, that one's just a little high, but it would still do it. it unless, unless, of course, Elliot ducked on me. Um, but I'm shooting right through, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you guys through there. I'm shooting right through the brush and I'm shooting right through, the, there's little twigs there and they're really messing with me, but I knew I had to shoot through them. <sighs> Pinwheeled him, all three shots. So I'm, the, the reason that this kind of practice is so important is because this is the real thing. This is what happens out there in the woods. And these are the things that we have to do to, to be able to kill these animals. So um, Elliot would be dead. Elliot would be dead right now. So we're gonna do more of this, guys. I'm gonna move these targets around. I, I got so many ideas about how we're gonna do this. Um, we're gonna see real hunting situations and what we could hunt with them. So stay tuned like this hit that bell at the bottom and if you hit that bell then you're going to see when every one of these videos comes back out okay let's walk you through there so you can see that see what i was shooting through so 
and this is what we were shooting through. Coming all the way through this. There's twigs all over. You guys can see them as we come through. Twigs all over. These are the ones that were really messing with me. But as you see, we killed Elliot. Now that we saw that I could kill Elliot at 15 yards through the brush, I wonder if I could do it at 30. Um, it really messed with me, those first couple of shots at, at 15. Oh, so we're at the edge. This is about 25. We'll see what we could do. We'll see if we could get it at 25. All right, let's see if Elliot's safe at 25. Man, there's so much more brush in the way now. Um, it's still one of those things though. You, you're gonna have to shoot some of these shots if you're gonna kill something. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and shoot through, see if we can get Elliot at 20, that's uh, about 22, 23 yards maybe. Oh, dude, did you see that? It hit a limb and it pushed that arrow right straight down. There's just some limbs. I guess you can't just, there's some limbs that are going to push you down. <laughs> I, it pushed your, I missed the whole deer. It pushed it down. Let's see if I can get one in there. That, how aggravating would that be if it was like 170 inch blacktail? Killed him. I, I got him. I got him on that one. It's a low heart shot, but and I still hit brush, but uh, I think these 650 grain arrows kind of carry through that stuff a little bit better. You know what I should try? I should try a 500 through there and see if there's a difference between the 500 and the 600, or 650. Let's see if I can get another one down on Elliot. I killed him. Okay guys, we're gonna shoot the Chief, the Liberty Chief, and we're gonna to try to get through all that brush with a lighter arrow, 500 grain arrows. Let's see if we can kill Elliot this way. Oh, hit a, see the limbs dancing in there? Hit him far forward limbs i still going through limbs but I, I was surprised the arrow actually did go through um that's probably a shoulder shot there that's probably not a good shot but what i'm really surprised that the that it did fly pretty straight through the limb that time it pushed it down a little bit but i'm going to shoot further back this time <laughs> it went right through the limb <laughs> it went right through and it Hey, that just took Elliot out so you can shoot through those limbs like that now I should probably put some broadheads on and do this test over with some broadheads um, I'll do that later I'm not gonna do it now but I wonder if a broadhead would fly through there like like that so let me I'm gonna walk you down there and uh, I'll let you see what what uh, it looks like with Elliot So there we are. That one was my last shot. That was my third. That was my first shot that hit that hit the limb back there. So yeah. So that was about 20 yards. Um, so we've learned something here. Okay. So I've learned something here. I've learned that uh, you can shoot through the brush. I don't know. We're gonna have to test this theory. I think our next video we're gonna be we're gonna be shooting through brush with the broadhead and see if we could actually get through the brush like i was getting through that's a pretty good to get to him the way i was i was having to shoot right straight through all of that bush back next to the house so i was shooting through a pretty substantial amount of uh brush to get through so um that's one of those shots that a lot of people talk about and it's kind of fun to test it but uh anyhow old Elliot he died on all those now on the 15 yarder it's a no it's it's a slam dunk after what I've seen today though I don't know about that 20 yarder so um, that's an iffy one uh, or 25 yards probably that's an iffy one so um, 
I think I would not take, I think I would keep it under 20 yards if I was gonna shoot through the brush like that. Now, if I had an opening and, and I felt good about it, I think I would take that, that longer shot. But uh, these tests, that's what that's fun about these tests, you guys, is we could, we could put all this stuff to, to, all these theories to practice. So, hey, if you guys like this stuff, um, t hit that little bell at the bottom. Um, because what that does is that will that will notify you when I put in my next video out all right thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this I enjoyed making it we got more coming we got a lot more of this stuff coming all right until then shoot straight